interesting choice to go for uh, Colossi when there's mass mutilisks. Uh, very, very interesting check choices by both players. I mean, we've seen a lot of Zergling. Oh my gosh, he's been spawning on this. Look at that. There's there's a crap load. There's an entire full tab of larvae sitting over here. Um, very interesting. I'm, so I'm surprised that he actually went for all these spine crawlers instead of trying to get some some units. If he had that much, uh, well, like he said that much larva, but if he had that much money and larva, could have gotten some more zerglings, which would be pretty good. Speed zerglings on creep. Come on, buddy, gotta keep creeping. Um, speed zerglings on creep would be very, very good against the stalkers. Not as good with the blink, uh, but uh, still relatively good, especially if you can get a flank going or something like that. Oh, look at these guys stuck up on the ramp because they blinked up there. Um, anyway, so White Rod, he's going to go for a little bit safer and keep near his, his main base, keep his keep his new expansion where his army. So this is turning into a huge macro game after all, um, where White Rod is going to be taking a fourth base and probably before too long a fifth because he can hold that spot pretty easily. I don't know why he doesn't kill those destructible rocks and oh my gosh, Ultralisks. Yeah, buddy. And he's got so many, he had so many spine crawlers over here, he can easily move a few up here. Um, make a little secondary uh, spot there. But Ultralisks are out now. And uh, mm, Colossi do okay against Ultralisks. If they have something in front of them, they can do. They can lay down the heat on the Ultralisks. Um, but Ultralisks uh, absolutely own uh, Colossi by themselves in general. Um, I actually, I know this firsthand, recently firsthand, uh, because I was playing the challenge missions. You know the Star Trek, StarCraft II challenge missions, uh, that kind of teach you how to play the game or whatever, and there's one situation where you have to, like, pick what units to use against other units. It's just like a counter-learning, uh, game thing basically and here's a couple colossi out now they are going to be good because they're going to be able to deal with those zerglings a lot better he won't just have to blink away all the time and there are a lot of zerglings on the map uh infestors in play he's got a lot of mules as well it looks like a battle ensuing here tons of zerglings surrounding the fungal growth now keeps the stalkers from blinking away he actually stalks more i'm sorry blinks more in the field i like this the the colossus hang out on the top where it can't be reached the mules instead of targeting the colossus well, maybe they're trying... No, they weren't targeting the Colossus. He just A-moved the Mutalisks, and it apparently was enough. Wow. Maybe he was hoping to just kill off all the Stalkers so the Mutalisks could just rampage. But um, the Mutalisks uh, taking some damage from those Stalkers. Just a few left. There's the Ultralisks coming in and are able to do some decent damage. Ultralisks is very, very good against Stalkers as well. Um, <laughs> unless they blink up to the high ground. Come on, blink up there. Blink from the Mutalisk. He needs to get everything on top of that, on top of that ridge, and just camp that spot. But there's just too many mutalisks. Uh, well, only two mutalisks, I guess. Actually, more ultras coming from the side. The stalkers trying to reinforce that location. Get up on this little block. But that means the ultralisks are free to. Uh, well, actually, no. Very, very low on on hit points now. Those ultras. He should probably just get them out of the way. Run them, run them away for now. Finally, we're seeing some action. Finding both players engaging full throttle, exchanging armies. And look at this. They're both down to. Uh, they were both about maxed, and they're both down uh, m many supply. Uh, well, 50 for maxed, I guess. Um, Stalkers venturing off their little high ground to try and kill off this base or attack this base at least. And yeah, here's White Rock uh, getting that extra expansion up as expected. He's mined out in his main so he can afford that. He's got a couple gateways. He needed some more output. He made a couple gateways and then didn't uh, warp gate them. There they go. Uh oh, warp prism uh, going in there. And we just saw a dark shrine going down as well. What's he going to do with the warp prism? Where is it going? Is he just scouting? He Maybe he's just scouting. Nope, here he's going to spawn in some, uh, some zealots. Might as well, right? Might as well spawn some zealots, see if he can kill some upgrades. Uh, what's he going for, actually? He's going for the drones first. I think at this point, well, actually, the, it's so far in the game. Let's see where the upgrades are at. Yeah, he's got full upgrades. Never mind, so the killing the upgrades would be no good at all. Oh, my God! So, oh, oh, my God, Ultralisks. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. In the meantime, these stalkers still being, an, uh, well, another batch of stalkers being annoying over at this base um, as well. I like this by, um... By White Raw being distracting in all kinds of different situations, just warps in a stalker just to be distracting over there while he puts his warp prism over here. He's probably going to presumably warp in more units. Oh, he brought the Colossi over here as well, trying to hold that ramp. If he can get some units on that ramp. Oh, in fact, I'm sorry, Corruptor's coming in to deal with those Colossi. The Colossi go down so quick. So much damage being done, and this is looking really, really, really bad for Damaga now. He is in deep trouble right now. Uh, these Ultralisks are just so good against the units that he has. Um, uh, he needs to start changing these to Colossi to Immortals uh, to deal with these Ultralisks. 
Um, cause, oh man, well, they do damage back to, uh, to armor pretty well, but, um, yeah, I, I guess the Colossi have mobility, but they're not gonna be able to do a ton of good unless he has, like, as many Ultras. If he had as many Ultras, maybe, but not with these Corruptors in play. I think these Colossi are just a waste of money with, with those Ultras and Corruptors in play. And here comes the Ultras on the ground. The Ultras can take anything on the ground. The Corruptors taking anything in the air. Moving out. Here comes a few uh, uh, Colossi. He's going to move them up to the high ground to escape the Ultras, but it's not going to matter with all these Colossi in play. Ultras doing tons of damage, just eating the cannons. Um, just absolutely destroying everything in their path. DT's in the mix, though, and that is, that is what, oh, man. DT's, uh, just as in Brood War can just come out and do so much damage, uh, so quickly. Here comes these Corruptors just hunting down those Colossi, uh, and the DT's eventually clean up the Ultralist just by virtue of the fact he couldn't see them. If he had an Overseer in that army, that would have been the end of the game. That would have been the end of the game right there, because those Ultralists would have been able to to destroy them pretty well. Finally opening up that gold base there. White Rod now with uh, five bases. One, two of them my oh, well, actually one of the mining. The second one, he just lost all the probes. He needs to switch all these over there. Uh, that's that's kind of weird that they're going back and forth between those two patches. That's a little... That's kind of strange. Just a little fun little AI quirk there. And oh no! DT drop! No overseers on this little island base. What is this? Spore crawler in the background is not ever going to see the light of day. Um, come on, just morph this to an overseer, buddy. Overseer, right now. Go, overseer. Um, now, I, I, I kind of keep uh, you know saying, oh, you need to do this, and you do that. This is a, a huge game. Lots of stuff going on at different locations. Um, I never even saw what happened to that um, um, warp prism that was up here before. Uh, <laughs> he needs vision to see up there to blink up. Um... Anyway, so I'm not criticizing the... Oh, there's the Observer. So he's going to be able to come up here and harass this new base as well. Point being, there's all kinds of stuff going on on, uh, on all kinds of places on this map. So you, I can't really blame them particularly. I mean, you'd have to basically be a, a, a pro gamer to, uh, to have the multitasking to, to run around and, and manage all these different situations at once. Uh, more Stalkers being warped. And there's that Warp Prism. It's been warped up here. And that maybe that's how he keeps harassing this location over here. He's going to jump into... Uh, phasing mode real quick, or uh, into, what is it, transport mode? Yeah, and uh, get out of the way before these Corruptors come in and own it. Come on, Corruptors! Um, there they go. He's going to even blink up to the high ground. Fungal growth on the Warp Prism to keep it from running any farther. Nicely done. And the Corruptors finish it off. The Stalkers are still on the high ground there. But, uh, De and Demaga CCCs that's interesting. I'm not sure what that... Oh, you know what? He probably accidentally hit enter. He was trying to hit... He probably hit <laughs> S-C-C-C-C and, uh, to build some more Corruptors and accidentally hit enter. So now White Rod knows what he's doing! Another DT got dropped up here somehow. I didn't even see how that happened. Was there another Warp Prism? No idea. All kinds of stuff going on all over the map. I'm sorry if I'm missing these same Stalkers! <laughs> Finally going to go down over here. Are they going to blink away? Oh, they blinked to this ground over here. Wow, absolutely ridiculous. These stalkers just staying alive so long and doing so much harassment and it's going to drop an, <laughs> drop an ultralisk on that high ground there. So, wow. So, look at this. So, we've got two mining bases for White Raw and we've got... Mm, no, no, not mining there. Thanks to this DT. We've got one high yield sort of mining, one island mining sort of and one island sort of mining so um actually i can check the income tab i'm still th thinking brood warish uh dt can get in no no dt denied uh, another dt over here my god these dts are being super annoying and that is what they are best at um anyway he drops his ultralisk back out here but you know it doesn't do much good unless he an, has an overseer in the area as well um dt is just being all kinds of annoying more ultralisks out though he's got another large force of ultralisks massive massive force he needs to just pin the overseers on those ultralisks from at this point and okay here we go he's running around okay those are actually zealots um well corruptors in inbound oh pop wow those are Bad. I mean, he was upgrading the air weapons before, so they're up to 16 damage per shot on those Corruptors. Lots and lots of damage there. Um, yeah, he's still just barely mining up here. Another Warp Prism coming in here is going to drop down Stalkers? I didn't know you could fit four Stalkers in a, in a Warp Prism. Oh yeah, I guess yeah, I guess that makes sense. You can. Anyway, um, what is going on over here? He's uh, Oh, he's... That was kind of lo looked really weird. He was dropping Creep. 
and uh, dropping drones out at the same time. That was very strange. Where are these ultras going? Is there a Nidus Canal over here I don't see or something? What are they doing? Uh, that's really strange. This is a massive, massive army here right now, though. Um, huge Zerg army, and I don't know exactly what White Rot has to deal with it. Finally, he's getting some mortals out. Um, they're going to be able to take lots and lots of uh, hits. I mean, they do... Uh, the Ultralisks do extra damage, you know, versus armored, but... The Hardened Shields still block most of it at the beginning. Um, and they still got a lot of hit points there. So these Immortals are going to be, be able to do tons and tons of good against the Ultralisks. I haven't actually seen a battle between them uh, lately. But in, in previous patches at least, uh, uh, Immortals just absolutely own the crap out of Ultras. Especially if they could like hold a ramp or something like that where the Ultras couldn't surround them. Absolutely amazing. And here he comes in with another group. He's got an Overseer this time. Corruptors to block anything from killing off that Overseer. He needs to snipe that Overseer with those Stalkers right now. That'd be the best use of that right now. Ultra is coming in, destroying everything once again. Main army coming in from behind, though. He's got the Immortals this time. He's got more DTs. He snipes the Overseer. Snipes the Overseer. Fungal growth on all the Stalkers. They can't blink away. The Ultralists are able to get in up close. Uh, immortals doing tons of damage, though. Picking off... Uh, those Ultras, but it's just too many. Are the Immortals... Oh, man, the Immortals just not quite enough to, um... To polish those off quickly enough to save most of his army, but they are obviously enough to kill off the army before, uh, losing his own. Um... Absolutely ridiculous, and of course the Corruptors just chilling overhead. I think I saw some corruption casted on those uh, Immortals as well. So, very, very cool to see that being used. I mean, you might as well, right? Um add some extra damage on there. Um, but again, the the hardened shields just absolutely winning the day in that battle. One of them got into their shields. Look at that. 33 health. One more shot would have killed that off. Um, and the DTs as well. I think the crucial point there was sniping that Overseer as he went in for the battle uh, made those DTs so much more effective. Uh, that was just awesome. Here he's going in for another attack. He's got those Immortals still. The shields have been uh, charged back up. I don't know if he has enough. Uh oh, he's going in. He's got a drop prepared. He's going to drop Banelings on top of that army. No! The Banelings blowing up on the Immortals, wasting the... Well, not really wasting the Banelings. He's going to be able to polish off this army, at least, uh, with those Banelings' help. And duck load GG's uh, my bad. I thought he had more to go off of than that. I apparently underestimated that, but uh, that he was apparently on his last legs, and uh, he appeared to have decent income, but uh, just apparently didn't, didn't think he had it, what it took to fought off this fight off this army. Um, I'm not sure why he left. Actually, that's that's a little strange because, uh, well, maybe. He, I'm surprised he didn't try and harass a little bit more or something like that. Demog was not mining a ton right here. He was he was actually even in, in economy, so a little bit strange. But uh, anyway, um, yeah, Demaga fighting very, very well and taking that major uh, battle, um, fighting on, losing this but getting out enough there, and I think maybe that's why he GG'd was because you know, he kept making Ultralisks. He kept making Ultralisks. And uh, those Immortals are pretty expensive. Losing those, I guess, he didn't want to try and bother. And the Corruptors, of course, <clears throat> were enough to handle any kind of air. So, and look at this. It looks like he killed off everything on this island anyway. Very strange GG, but um, yeah. So uh, I'm not going to mention exactly what happened in Game 3 in case someone's watching these in order. This was Game 2 of the series. I cast a Game 3 first because I didn't know it was Game 3. I just picked a random game. That was the one on Blistering Sands. So uh, I'm going to move on now to uh, Game 4 and uh, continue this best of 7. All right. Thanks for watching.